Hello everyone and welcome back to Jacklit Educational Channel. So this is the unit wise syllabus preparation for the UGC NET Environmental Science paper. And today in this video we are going to start the unit two of the syllabus that is environmental chemistry. Yes, this is the part one for the environmental chemistry. And if you haven't checked the unit one of the UGC NET paper, then you can check the link given in the i button as well as in the description below. And guys, you can also join our Telegram group Learn for the Environment. Link will be provided in the description for the regular quizzes for the environmental science entrances and prepare yourselves for the examination. So without wasting much time, let's get started. So first of all, let us see the syllabus for the unit two of environmental science paper of UGC NET that is environmental chemistry. So in the first portion, you can see the starting is fundamentals of environmental chemistry in which classification of elements is the first portion. So this is very important. We'll know everything in depth so that you can be able to perform well in the examination. So get ready with your notes so then you can write down all the important points which I'm telling you in this video. So classification of elements. Let's begin with the basics. So guys, no need to worry if you are not strong enough in the chemistry portion, you will be able to understand very easily. This video is very, very simple for you to note down all the important points. So first of all, what are elements? So elements are the pure substances containing only one kind of atoms. So if we are having more than one kind of atoms, we will call them as compounds. So here chemistry or the chemist have discovered 118 elements so far. So there are statements given in the question in the UGC NET exam. They can ask that well, how many elements are there. So 118 elements are there and the first 94 elements are occurring naturally on earth and the remaining 24 are the synthetic elements. So what are synthetic elements? They are produced in the nuclear reaction or they are radioactive elements. So these points are important, note down. And what we will know that how the element is defined. So the property of the element is defined as the number of protons in the nucleus. So that is the defining property of an element, number of protons. So these things you must be knowing proton, electron, neutron. So proton defines the property of an element and it is referred to as its atomic number. So number of protons gives us the atomic number and what symbol is used to denote that? The symbol Z. Yes, capital Z is used to denote the atomic number of any element. So as you can see here, let us assume there is an element X. Here in the base bottom side, we will see written as Z and the top corner will be seen as capital A. So this capital Z as we have discussed, it is the atomic number. What is atomic number? Number of protons we have discussed. So jitne bhi protons honge us element mein usse hum Z se denote karenge and mass number we will denote it as capital A. What is that? Mass number is actually number of protons plus number of neutrons in that element. So that is Z plus N and it is denoted as capital A that is neutron ka number plus proton ka number milke hame mil jayega mass number of that element. So difference between mass number and atomic number is that atomic number is number of protons and mass number is number of protons plus neutron and chemical symbol is given as capital X. So here we will know with the help of this small table to understand more easily. Let us assume hydrogen. So hydrogen it will be written as 1H1. So 1H1 means number of proton is 1 that means Z and number of neutrons is how much? It is 0. So how can you calculate? By subtracting mass number minus atomic number. That means A minus Z we will get the number of neutrons. Very simple. So here 1 minus 1 will be 0. That means neutron is 0 in hydrogen. Similarly number of electrons will be how much? It will be always equal to the number of protons if it is not given in the ionic form. Agar ionic form mein diya hai, tab electrons ke number change honge. Agar nahi diya hai, then electrons will be equal to number of protons in that element. Similarly, carbon is denoted as capital C612. 6 is in the base, that means atomic number. That means number of protons of carbon is how much? It is 6. And how many is the number of neutrons? We will simply subtract as we said, 12 minus 6 will give 6. That is number of neutron also 6. And number of electrons also how much? It will be equal to number of protons. That means it will be also 6. So 666 six, six will be the configuration for proton, neutron, electron of carbon. Similarly, when you are going to uranium, you will get the value as 
यूरेनियम नाइनटी टू टू थर्टी एट नाइनटी टू इज द एटोमिक नंबर ऑफ द यूरेनियम टू थर्टी एट इज द मास नंबर ऑफ द यूरेनियम एंड सिमिलरली वी विल गेट प्रोटॉन्स नाइनटी टू नंबर ऑफ न्यूट्रॉन्स विल बी टू थर्टी एट माइनस नाइनटी टू दैट इज वन फोर्टी सिक्स एंड नंबर ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन्स विल बी नाइनटी टू दैट इज इक्वल टू नंबर ऑफ प्रोटॉन्स सो आई होप दिस वॉज वेरी सिंपल फॉर यू टू अंडरस्टैंड एंड इफ यू आर हैविंग स्टिल डाउट यू कैन आस मी इन द कमेंट सेक्शन सो लेट्स मूव ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट लाइफ so here comes another important concept so these concepts are asked in the examination in the statement forms so here we will know what are the properties of metals so note down one by one i am telling you so an element is a metal if it has the following properties so what are the properties number one is if it is lustrous that means it has shining surface so we can say metals iron are shining surface so they are lustrous so that is the property of an element when it is a metal next is it is a good conductor of heat and electricity that is the property of an element if it is a metal next thing is it is ductile ductile means what most of the time you will be confused between ductile and malleable that is ductility and malleability ductile means it can be drawn into wires and malleable means it can be beaten into thin sheets form so these two are different wire form mein agar hum convert kar sakte hain kisi bhi एलिमेंट को देन इट इज अ मेटल विच इज हैविंग द प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ डक्टिलिटी एंड मेलेबिलिटी वेन इट कैन बी बीटेन इन टू थिन शीट्स फॉर्म नेक्स्ट इज मेटल्स आर सॉलिड एट रूम टेम्परेचर दैट थिंग यू शूड नोट डाउन एंड मेटल्स हैज ए टेंडेंसी टू लूज वन और मोर इलेक्ट्रॉन सो दैट इज वन ऑफ द वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ एन एलिमेंट इफ इट इज अ मेटल टू टेंडेंसी टू लूज वन और मोर इलेक्ट्रॉन्स नाउ सर्टन एक्सेप्शन आर देयर बिकॉज केमिस्ट्री इज द सब्जेक्ट ऑफ एक्सेप्शन so mercury and gallium are the elements which are metal but they are liquid at the room temperature note down what are they they are mercury and gallium they are liquid at room temperature but usually they should be solid the element which is metal next exception is that zinc is not malleable and ductile but it is a metal that means zinc is not able to be drawn into wires neither into thin sheets but it is considered as a metal so let's move on to the non metals properties so here comes our property for non metal so if an element is a non metal it should have the following properties it must be having first is it has no luster that means not shiny surface so opposite of metal next is it is a bad conductor of heat and electricity that means it cannot conduct heat or electricity next thing is it is not ductile it is not malleable so everything opposite of metal very simple and it has a tendency to gain one or more electron this is the important thing because metals have the tendency to lose electrons and non metals to gain electrons similarly it is liquid or gas or a brittle solid at room temperature so unlike metals which are mostly solid so here in case of non metals they can be liquid gas or brittle solid at our room temperature so i hope you have noted down all these things let's move on to the next slide so guys we know that there are 118 elements discovered so far and we should keep them in a particular table into a group so that we can easily study their properties so in order to make the groups there are certain steps taken by different scientist different types of tables have been made and these are very very important to know starting with the dobernier triads so here in 1863 dobernier he classified the elements into group of three elements so triads tri means three so with the help of three elements he made certain groups and what were the properties so the three elements group had similar properties and the atomic mass of the middle element that means 1 2 3 the second element the atomic mass was the arithmetic mean of the atomic masses of the first and third element that means if that is an element a then b then c then b's atomic mass will be the average of a and c so we'll know one by one what are these triads and what are the elements divided by dobernier's in the dobernier triads so here comes the table element lithium sodium and potassium were kept as dobernier triads three elements where the atomic mass of lithium was 7 sodium 23 and potassium was 39 So here, if you add seven plus thirty-nine, it will come around forty-six, and the average, that is, the arithmetic mean of forty-six, will be how much? It will be twenty-three. That is the middle element, sodium. 
and these three elements showed the similar properties. Similarly, other Dobernier strides were calcium, strontium and barium. So atomic mass of calcium 40, atomic mass of barium is 137 and average will be 88 and these three are having similar properties. Similarly, element chlorine, bromine and iodine, they were having the formula for Dobernier strides and atomic mass were 35.45, 80 the average of 127 plus 35.45. So these are the Dobernier strides in the triplet form. So here I have explained here atomic mass of sodium will be how much? Same thing which we have discussed the average of lithium and potassium atomic mass. So this is simple I guess you have noted down. Let's move to one more category of classification of elements. So the next man was Newland. Yes, Newland's classification of elements we will know here. That is in 1863 it was proposed by him and he observed that when the elements are arranged in the increasing order of their atomic masses. So till that time how many elements were discovered? That many elements were kept increasing order of their atomic masses and he saw that the properties of the elements repeated at every eighth element similar to the repetition of musical notes in an octave. So here what is musical notes? So this we will be discussing very simple thing and he gave this Newland gave this law that is the law of octaves. This is not octet law. This is law of octaves given by Newland. You should note down. And why he said that musical notes? Yes, musical notes you all know. Sa, re, ga, ma, pa, da, ni. So I'm telling that sa, re, ga, ma, pa, da, ni. Then again comes the sa. That means he arranged for example lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine. So here according to his formula the eighth element that is let us assume lithium is the first element. So sa, re, ga, ma, pa, dha, ni, sa. Sa means again sodium. So here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 the eighth element sodium and lithium they are having the similar properties. Similarly from sodium if you are calculating the eighth elements that means 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8 that means potassium in the musical notes sa, re, ga, ma, pa, dha, ni again sa is coming to the potassium so here sodium and potassium also having the same properties similar properties so like this sodium, potassium and lithium are having the similar properties and they are falling in the 8th from one another that is the 8th term similarly if you see the beryllium also the 8th term is what? 8th term is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 that means magnesium. So if you arrange them again 8th from magnesium will be calcium. So all these three are having the similar properties. So I hope it was clear. But the thing was according to this classification he was only able to classify until calcium. So beyond calcium he was not able to prove that. That is the disadvantage of Newland's law of octaves. So I hope it was clear, we have to arrange them in the increasing order of the atomic masses. Then the first term will be having the similar property with the 8th term. Similarly, the 8th term will be having the similar property as the 16th term. So 8, 8, 8, it is the repetition. I hope you are able to understand. Let's move to the next category of elements classification. So the next element classification was in the form of graph. Yes, graphical classification given by Lothar Mayer which is known as Lothar Mayer's graph. What he tried in 1869, he tried to classify the elements by plotting a graph of atomic volume versus atomic mass of different elements. So I have already explained atomic mass, atomic volume in the initiation of this video. So here you will know that similar elements occupied similar position in the graph of Lothar Mayer's. So here as you can see in the x axis he took the atomic weight and in the y axis he took the atomic volume. So here you can see the peaks of lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium. So these things are showing that these are having the similar properties. So I hope you are able to understand this graph you should only remember was given as per the atomic volume versus atomic mass and here similar elements occupied similar position in the graph. So here the peak positions were occupied by sodium, lithium, potassium and rubidium. So they are having the similar properties. Similarly, we will see these things, manganese, nickel, copper, all these things are having the same place. They are also having the similar properties. So next things are very important that is Mendel's classification of elements. 
and the thing is more than periodic table those are very important also we will know in the next video because this video is going too long you will be bored so see you guys in our next video if you enjoyed this video if you have noted down and learned something new don't forget to subscribe the channel hit the notification icon to get all further updates and yes keep smiling believe in yourself see you guys in our next video